Welcome back. This tutorial is on the Warp Engine Grills. If you like these tutorials or find them helpful, then please remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell icon to be notified when I post new tutorials. Welcome back. Alright, today we're going to do something a little different. going to try and create a grid that will fit here uh, and underneath this uh, flux uh, container, whatever that thing is called. Um, whoops, nice going there. I'm definitely hitting the wrong buttons today. All right. Anyway. We're going to come back here in just a few minutes. But right now, I figured I'll show you what we are going to attempt to be making. There is a screen here and under here. And it's hard to see. You never really saw it. You, you never saw it clearly during the run of the original series. That's for certain. And even these pictures uh, of the model after it was uh, delivered, like this one is... Uh, uh, shot of the Enterprise when it was being filmed for Where No Man Has Gone Before. <clears throat> um, and then there are these misleading pictures. Well, but misleading pictures. Chris Trice did a great job in photographing the uh, original USS Enterprise. And I'm going to show you something that's actually going to change uh, and what I should have remembered. These are not actually tiny little pyramids, but uh, up here... Uh, and this detail is wrong here. So I misled you about this. And uh, and this picture is misleading because for whatever reason, they changed the grill that they uh, had inserted here during the 1980s um, uh, restoration of the ship. Uh, they employed a special effects company. They came in, they did a heavy-handed paint job and they goofed up some of the details on the Enterprise. Um, let's see here. And here's another shot of the same thing. But at the very least, you can see that there's a grill both underneath and in back of this uh, flux uh, chiller control. Um, but, oh yeah, all right. So here's what I was talking about. The intercoolers on the back of the warp engines, I had you create tiny little pyramids well, it's more like tiny little raised X's. Uh, still kind of like a pyramid. The center is is higher up than the rest. These uh, arms go down, but it's, it's a little more of an intricate shape than what I had you make with the uh, pyramids. Again, not that I think we'll ever get all that close, but if you want to go back and remake this with kind of X pyramids instead of just straight pyramids... Uh, that would probably be just that would uh, that would obviously be more slightly more accurate, and I was starting to wonder if that was the grill as well. But no, um, I actually have from when the model was uh, delivered uh, to the uh, Smithsonian. They there were a few things like number one back in the seventies. Even before the Enterprise, the 11-foot Enterprise model was delivered, it was on display in a school uh, out in California, and even then it was missing its navigation deflector, the big dish on the front of the engineering hull. So that was already gone. Um, and by the time it got delivered to the National Air and Space Museum, I believe the warp engine hemispheres, um, which... Dare Romer 2000 has pointed out is actually uh, been named after the fact as the Bussard collectors. That's where it, uh, where the engines apparently sweep in uh, hydrogen uh, as a fuel source. Uh, those were smashed or missing uh, by the time they got to deliver to the Smithsonian. So they were replicated. However, here is a picture of, of some of the components. These are bits underneath the warp engines that we haven't created yet. But you'll notice that they are rounded and uh, you know, they're complex curves, even though they look like simple shapes. They look just like rectangles. 
and here are those uh, flashing guards next to lights at the back of the engineering hall. Here, obviously, the sensor dish underneath the uh, primary uh, saucer. Here is a bit of uh, detail that we'll be adding uh, to the front uh, arms uh, on the sides and bottom of the uh, engineering hall. But of course, oh, and uh, hang on, before, before I go too far afield, over here on the top left-hand side, these are the grills that uh, go up and down the warp engine pylons. And you'll notice they're a grill kind of like this, but <clears throat> they've got this weird pill shape hole instead of circles. So we'll be replicating that with a texture, I think. Um, although we could make a grill just like we're going to today. Here is the grill for inside the warp engine. So this is actually the grill taken out, laid out. You can actually count how many of these. And the important one for us is that there's 12 from top to bottom, 12 holes. The 13th hole would be, you know, this set down here if you wanted to go beyond uh, the 12. But there were 12 top to bottom. And then, you know, a lot from left to right. I didn't count them out. But it is certainly possible. And you can see that is up here. And this is a better shot of those uh, rectangular portions under the warp engines. These are in front of the intercoolers at the back of the warp engines. Here are those blocks that go uh, on the sides of the back of the warp engines. And here's another shot of that. Um washboard texture with the pill shape hole instead of a round hole like here and i think that'll that'll prove it now they've gone and replicated this fairly well there are again 12 holes top to bottom on the uh, washboard grill here <clears throat> insert for the latest restoration of the enterprise and here you can actually slightly make out the the uh x uh kind of pyramid shape. I, I'm leaving my pyramid shape. I figure it's close enough. Um, these are more like corrugated cardboard and same here, but this, these holes, it's just 12 holes top to bottom, and we're going to replicate that today. All right, so start up a Blender and, and select your uh, tutorial file, and we're going to kind of, right now, we're going to ignore everything that we've done I'm gonna to go to a top view shift s cursor to center and I'm going to just load uh, a plane all right I'm gonna tab into it and I'm gonna hit subdivide over here on the left hand side so now um, there we go uh, this is going to sound weird. I saw a fella make a fast circle. Now, we could add a cylinder and then do a subtraction to this, to this plane. And it would pretty much do exactly the same thing that I'm going to do here. But I like the idea that I saw in this one tutorial. So I'm going to share with you how to do it it's a little weird. Uh, after you've subdivided your plane, you have to right mouse click on the center and pick that one vertex in the center. Now, hit your space bar and start typing bevel. And you get these two. There's a transform edge bevel and there's a mesh bevel. We're going to pick the mesh bevel. And I just left click to get out of there. Come over here to on the left hand side of your screen there's there's some controls for your bubble and offset is fine amount I'm going to make 0.85 and I'm going to take segments up to 8 and then I'm going to turn on vertex only and this is what appears okay so now Eric that doesn't look like a circle y yeah I know bear with me for just a moment we're going to hit X on our keyboard and tell it to delete the highlighted faces. Now, that leaves us with this weird shape in the center. 
and uh, I'm going to go to Z to make it transparent just so you can see this a little easier. I'm going to pick a vertex. I'm going to hold down my Alt key, and I'm going to pick an adjoining vertex. Now I'm holding down the Shift and Alt key. I'm going to pick a vertex on the next side, and then third side, and the fourth side. All the vertices in the center have been selected. Now, again, this is a little weird. Hit the space bar and type TO, like two, and then sphere. And, and you get a transform. So now, select that and left click and, whoops. Okay, and just move your mouse, I guess down is the fastest way, until you get a circle and then left click. I'm going to go back to Z. A to deselect, T to tab out, and we now have one circle inside a square. I'm going to reduce this in size, so S for scale, and bring it down until it's just a tiny little thing. Now... We know that there are 12 holes from top to bottom, but I like to leave myself a little extra wiggle room when I'm making this thing. So I'm going to go over here to our modifiers, and I'm going to add... We're going to actually add two array modifiers, but the first one, array modifier, fixed count. I'm going to tell this 13. I'm going to leave relative offset on. I'm going to take down the X direction to zero. And I'm going to go to the Y direction, and I'm going to type 1. Okay. So now we've got 13 holes from top to bottom. That gives us a little leeway when we're spacing this thing. If you don't want that leeway, you can take this down to 12, which is fine, perfectly fine. But now we're going to go in to Array Modifier, and we're going to add another Array Modifier. And this time it's going in the right direction. And this 2, I'm going to make... 200. All right. So there we go. We've got a great big grid of perfectly placed circles. So now, I don't think you have to, but I'm going to apply these array modifiers. So now I've got one great big mesh. I'm going to Shift, Control, Alt, C. Geometry, whoops, to origin, which is actually okay. I meant to do origin to geometry, but six of one, half a dozen of the other. I'm going to scale this down, right? I'm going to go to three, rotate 90, and control one. All right. I'm going to move this, grab. I'm going to put it at my engine here, or just so that it's close, and I'm going to scale this down. All right, cool. Basically, we want this at least as long as that grill here. All right. I'm going to go back to where we've got our warp engine items. And I'm going to pick this uh, area here where we want the grill. All right, that's it's fine. I just want, I'm not going to, here, let me go to Z, make it more obvious. So you can see what I'm, what we want to get to, right? I want this here. So now, I'm going to go to 7. I'm going to grab my new grill. Grab Y. I'm going to move it really, really close. Oh, yeah. Uh, trying to remember. No. Control A. All right, so I'm going to... My grid is selected. I'm going to normalize location. Control A. 
rotation, control A, and scale. You know what? I'm going to do the same thing with this. Control A, location, control A, rotation, control A, scale. All right. So now, what I want to do is I want to take my grill. Uh, shoot. What is that thing? Right, right, right. It is called shrink wrap. All right. So I want to shrink wrap. So I'm, I'm going to use the form that we created. I'm doing this backwards, aren't I? All right. I want to take this and I want to bend it to fit this. So what I'm going to do is, is my mistake. So I'm going to pick this curved. It was a cylinder, right, that we modified. And I'm going to add a new modifier. It's going to be shrink wrap. I'm going to pick my grill. No, I, I, I got that wrong. Okay, so I'm going to, sorry, sorry. Pick the grill, shrink wrap, and you want to tell it what you want it to shrink wrap to. And it's going to be the cylinder in the background. I want it to be offset by 0.5. By not by 0.5, hot dog. 0 0.05, maybe less. 0 0.01. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, and over here we want nearest surface point. And it's, you know what, it's not long enough. I should have had you make it more than 200. If I scale this in the X direction, that's not going to do it. Oh. That's interesting. Okay. Um, shift, Control, Alt, C. Origin to center of mass volume. Hmm. Shift Alt Control C. Origin to geometry. Does that do it? Okay. So let's try and scale X. Ah, very good. So now it curves a little, like what we want, right? Now. This is going to sound a little odd, but I want to pick the cylinder that we are shrink wrapping this to. And I'm going to go to uh, uh, the object control here. It looks like a little box. And I don't know how you intend to render your scenes, but I'm going to show you how to render using cycles. So I'm using cycles as a visual rendering system up here, right? You can choose between uh, the internal Blender render, the Blender game renderer, and cycles, at least now. Um, and then there are a whole bunch of things that you can choose, including some cycles settings. So I don't want that back section seen by my camera. If you're going to take it and use it to make like a glow or something in back of the grill, you can leave it. But I'm going to turn off its visibility and I'm going to turn off, uh, it won't receive or cast a shadow. All right, so you can't see it, but the grill is still in place. I'm going to shift D with the, uh, oh, no, I'm not. I want to pick the grill. Shift D that and uh, control one. I'm going to grab that grill. Uh, I'm going to delete the shrink modifier on the second grill. Grab X, move it over here, and there's another one of these modified cylinders hidden here up front underneath this. So I'm going to shrink wrap. I just saw you here before. There we are. 
0.01 nearest surface point keep above the surface and pick that cylinder Hmm, did not work as well. Let's try it this way. Cylinder 105. Much better. Much, much better. And it's even going around the edges a little bit. So now, uh, with my grill selected, I'm going to go over to uh, our, our textures area, although we haven't added any actual textures yet. And I'm going to grab one of my uh, silvers here. Grab this one and make that silver as well. Alrighty, now if I bring in the rest of the Enterprise here. <clears throat> matter of fact, I'll bring in some lights and cameras. And I'm going to... Uh, get out of perspective mode and let's try and do a shot similar to uh, what we saw with the Chris Trice all right so this is fairly close up I'm going to go to rendered mode and we'll see how this looks all in all not too bad so We've got our 12 uh, holes from top to bottom on our grill. We place the grill both fore and aft, and it should conform fairly well. Pardon my wife coughing in the background. Uh, to the shape of the cylinder that we had in place. Oh, I didn't turn off the cylinder here, so you can see the difference. It's so much brighter here than here. It's because there are holes that look through the hole here. And I'm going to have to hide that one cylinder. If I go here. Here. All right. I'm going to go to Z. I'm going to pick this cylinder here. If I go to Z, it'll be a little more obvious. I'm going to go to my object options here. Turn off the camera. Turn off the shadow. And reselect all my layers and then go back to rendered and now that's better you can see through the through the holes to the hull underneath and actually yeah a, a kind of a Chris Trice looking picture would be kind of like this that's not bad so we've got the correct number of holes from top to bottom they're in the correct place. They are the correct shape. And we have them sitting right where we want them on the warp engines. All right. Next time we will do uh, more shapes. Um, on the front, we'll add those uh, uh, rectangular-like items underneath the warp engines uh, in front. And then we'll start building all the bits that go inside the Bassard collectors, and we'll also take out the, uh, eventually we will take out the three cuts along the outside and add those leather snaps uh, to the warp engines. I'm sure that uh, somebody has come up with a fancy name for them, but they were put in place just to hold uh, those plastic uh, hemispheres in place. Uh, don't forget to save your work. File, save, and that's a, that's a decent amount of work, guys. And I will see you, uh, see you next tutorial. Thanks.